Hey everybody, Zigzag here with another video for you. <laughs> my, my wife found out I was doing these videos and found out I was my name was Zigzag and she's like, what the, <laughs> why do you call yourself Zigzag? She says, that's like, those are like rolling papers, aren't they? And I said, she goes, you don't smoke or anything. What do you call yourself that? And I was like, I don't know, I just, the name wasn't taken. So I just took it, it sounded cool. She's like, that is so weird. But I mean, anyway, so yeah, whatever. Zigzag here. Sounds, sounds good to me. Okay, so we're going to do a video just like I did several years ago. Several years ago, I did a video on how to neutralize the tubes on a Kenwood hybrid using just a second receiver. And the reason I do this is because like me many of you may not have all this oscilloscope and all that stuff um i don't have all that stuff i'm i'm not a big radio tech i'm just a basic ham operator that likes to work on stuff right so you know i've got my i've got my little frequency counter got my cheap power meter got your basic dummy load hey i got a desoldering iron i changed out all the caps in this radio right uh, stuff like that, except the HV cap. I might do that. I might not. Anyway, I've got my, got all my deoxid and all that bullshit back there. Um, but other than that, you know, just basic, basic tools, and you can do this radio neutralization with basic tools. So I make these so you don't you don't need to feel intimidated by this stuff. Anybody can do it. So. Maybe you've got the service manual, right? You've looked at the service manual. We're only going to use one thing out of the service manual. And other than that, it's going to be just like my last video. We're going to, it just tells you to put the radio on 29 megahertz, 10C. Other than that, we are not using this. That is like Greek. Screw that. It'll make your head spin. We're gonna just do it just like we did on the Kenwood. And so we're gonna start right here by putting that to 29. That's gonna be 10C, putting this to zero. You've got the radio going into a dummy load. In this case, I got a meter and a dummy load, okay? You're gonna take this carrier and you're gonna make sure that's all the way down, including your microphone, all the way down. You're gonna put the mode switch to USB. Okay, you're gonna have your heater on. You're gonna let those tubes warm up for a few minutes. And then you're gonna to flip to MOX. You're gonna have that set to IC and you're gonna check, for, make sure you got your 60 milliamps of bias right there. That's three bars on this particular meter. 60 milliamps of bias. Just flip that. If you don't have 60, you know how to adjust that. Just come back here. Adjust that bias so you've got 60 milliamps, all right? Okay, so once you got that set, you're gonna flip this to tune. Then I always have these knobs, since we're on 29, I have these knobs close to 10. I just basically put them at 10, 10. This is usually right around three, all right? And start, and what I do, guys do this differently. I go about halfway on the carrier and I start tuning starting with this for maximum power, okay? After I've got that set, then I go back and forth between these two. So this one, back to that one, just make sure, tune for maximum power. If you don't have that meter, just use the power meter on this thing. You know, flip it up to PO. Then I go max, and I go back and forth until I've got maximum power, all right? And do this in short bursts, like we're talking five seconds. You can easily do that in five seconds. And then unkey it and let it sit for like 10 seconds and then go back and check. Make sure you got power, maximum power, okay? So you've got that set. That's kind of, if you've had these radials, that's, that you probably know that like the back of your hand. And it's just your normal tune-up procedure. All right, this is where things get a little bit different, um, but that's pretty dang simple. So now what you're going to do, you've got turned off the mocks, obviously. Leave that connected. 
to the dummy load, but this plug here, you're gonna pull this, pull it out. It's the same thing as flipping down that SG switch. But in this case, you're gonna pull that out. Okay? Then you're gonna have your second receiver. Now in this case, I just tuned my second receiver to upper sideband and it's close. I, what I did is I then flip the mocks and I was able to find, find it. It was pretty dang close to the 29 where it sent this meter about halfway up on the dial. And this is just connected to a little miracle whip that's completely detuned. Um, you'll probably get a signal even without an antenna. On You'll, you'll get an S meter reading, put it closer or whatever. And I just like to have it halfway, anywhere, somewhere where I can see it dip a little bit or go forward. It's, it's nice having, you know, something like this with a big external meter, but having an analog meter, essentially, because it's, it's pretty precise. Okay, so, uh, once you've seen that to where you've got, you've got something there to work with, this is where you're going to come back here behind this radio, and... This is where your adjustment's gonna be. It's gonna be right here. You're gonna see a little screw down in there. Neutralization cap. Okay? Um, all you gotta take off is just this bottom section of this particular radio. It's actually more convenient than the Kenwood. So you're gonna, um, this is gonna be the screw you're gonna use. All right, let's get to the real important stuff. Don't even think about using something like this <laughs> okay, this, this is going to, well, you know what? Let's not even say what it's going to do. Just don't even think about it. You're going to use a fully insulated tool. Not an anti-static, any of that crap, fully insulated. Where I get mine from is k4eaa.com. They sell these. I don't get anything for that. I just like the ones they sell because they've got two ends on it. One end... You can see it says K. I use that for the Kenwood hybrids. Kenwood's got a nice kind of a wide, which this one works well on. The other end, Yesu. And you can see I filed down the end of that. I filed that down just perfectly to where when I put that in here, it almost, it actually just sticks in there. I can even let go of it and it holds itself. I got it just filed just perfectly. And these things are really strong. All right, and they're, they're long. You're not in there close to where you're gonna nail yourself by touching something. Because there's, there's a lot of voltage in this section all around this, for sure. So if you don't know what you're doing, just do what I'm saying. It's really easy and you'll keep yourself safe. So that's what you're gonna use. You're gonna use this. You're gonna go in there and you're gonna get, get on that neutralization screw. Flip this to MOX and you're gonna look at that S meter, and you're gonna turn this screw on the back of the radio, on the underside, ever so slightly, and you see that meter dip. It's not gonna dip a ton, but you will definitely see it dip. You do not need to like, this just barely needs to move back and forth, just rotate back and forth, and you'll see that dip on there. After that, flip everything off, your box, your heater, be sure to put your plug back in and you are set to go. You just did that. It's not, uh, not that big of a deal, really simple. And you've neutralized the tubes on one of these bad boys. So I hope that helps. Um, give me a thumbs up if this video helped you a little bit, just for the hell of it. And have a great day. We'll see you.